We're going to talk about the path goal theory of leadership today. We're working out of Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership. And as always, this is an introduction to this research and theory. This is not a comprehensive review. So if that fits the bill, then let's get into the details. So this theory is based upon expectancy theory. Robert House and his associates developed this decades ago. This is a situational theory of leadership. And what that means in essence is the leader looks at the situation and they have to ask themselves, how should I lead given the circumstances here? This is where followers are motivated to be productive when they believe that a successful task completion will provide a path to a valuable goal. In other words, the leader has to show them what that path is. And when they do, the followers get very motivated because they feel like they can be successful. So it's the leader's role then to communicate expectations clearly to followers and the rewards that they can expect when they successfully complete that task. So that's where that motivation comes in. And of course, along the way, leaders should also help followers overcome any obstacles that they face. So there's some other research that came a little after this by some of the same associates that talked about the two main propositions of this research. And that is that first, the leader's function is to provide subordinates with coaching, guidance, support, and rewards necessary for effectively satisfying their performance that would otherwise be lacking in the environment. So here's something the leader brings to the table. They have to offer that coaching, guidance, support, and rewards that may not be there. So if the followers are unsure what to do or they're not how, knowing how to move forward, the leader steps in and offers these kinds of helps. The second proposition is that the specific leader behavior that will accomplish these functions are determined by the situational variables, which may moderate the relationship between the leader behavior and other variables. A, the characteristics of the subordinates and B, the environmental factors. So let me sum that up in my own words. The leader decides on their behavior based upon what's going on with subordinates and second, the situation, the environmental factors. So that's how they decide. They read, the leader reads the situation and then decides how to respond. That's why it's a situational model. There are four communication styles that result from this reading of the situation. And we're gonna look at all four and then I'll show you a chart from uh, Johnson and Heckman's book that show you where they plug in depending upon the situation that the leaders see. And the first is the directive style of leadership. This is like old fashioned management. This is procedure related communication behavior that includes planning, organizing, coordinating, making policies and other specific guidance. So this is really basic level managerial style based upon the task, it's directive leadership. The second is supportive leadership. And here's where there's a interpersonal communication focus on focus on the concern and the needs and the well-being of the followers and the facilitation of a desirable climate for that kind of interaction. So they're looking to create a supportive atmosphere with each individual follower and overall on the team. The third is participative leadership. This leader here is communicating in a way that's designed to solicit opinions and ideas from followers for the purpose of involving the followers in decision making. So they might have opinions on what's going on and the leader then has that open discussion to get their input, to get their feedback so that they make better decisions as a team. And the fourth is achievement oriented leadership. Here the communication is focused on the goal attainment and the accomplishments. The emphasis is on achievement of excellence by demonstrating confidence in the follower's ability to achieve their goals. So these are four ways that you would lead, four styles of leadership depending upon the situation. And Johnson and Hackman have a nice chart that shows the kinds of situations leaders might face and then the way they could respond with these four leadership styles. So these are not in the same order that we just went over, but this is the way the chart is laid out. And as mentioned earlier, leaders have to figure out what's going on with the followers. That's the nature of the followers here and also the task environment. So what's going on in the environment? And those two factors will determine how the leader responds, what kind of pathway, if you will, they give their followers. 
So the achievement-oriented approach should be used when followers possess the necessary skills and have a high need to succeed. So they've got the skills, they're highly motivated, but the task is unstructured, but it's under the control of the followers. So followers are ready to go, but the task is unstructured, but the followers can decide. So this is where you emphasize achievement and help them get going in that direction. They don't necessarily need a lot of instruction. You just encourage them to achieve uh, the outcomes. The next is the participative style. And here's where followers are unsure of what they're supposed to do, especially if that is causing them some apprehension. But they do have what's called an internal locus of control. So they, they're unsure, but they also feel like they can make decisions. They know how to approach the situation. Uh, they can they they feel capable of approaching the situation on their own. They don't need a lot of guidance. So you participate with them. You get them talking, sharing their opinions, and you guide them through that process. That's especially if the task is unstructured. So this participation facilitated by the leader is a kind of sense making that the group involved gets involved in to find a clearer path forward. The supportive style of leadership is used when followers are skilled and they also have a need for affiliation so they want to feel connected the task may be structured especially if it's a stressful maybe repetitive task and that combination calls for more support from the leader so they know how to do the job it's pretty structured but and they're skilled but they also want to feel more connected so if the if you think about it, if the task is really boring you want to make things more supportive and enjoyable so you can at least feel good about going into that situation. And the, the fourth one is directive. This is used when followers are inexperienced or unsure, and they have that external locus of control. So they don't feel like they have a lot of decision-making ability. They don't feel like they have the ability to just go in there and do it themselves. They need that authority, so they want you to be more directive. Also, when the task is unstructured, this directive style works in that situation because people just need to be told what to do. It's like, look, we don't know what we're doing. Uh, we're not sure how to approach this. Can you come in here and just tell us what to do? So those are the four styles of leadership based upon those two variables, the nature of the followers and their, their nature, their character, and then also the nature of the task or the environmental factors that weigh in. So this is why they call it a situational model in the Johnson and Hackman book, the leader reads the situation and then applies one of these four leadership styles to meet that need at the moment. So question of the day, what's your favorite or most interesting part to you about this theory? I would love to hear your comments in that section below. Maybe you find it useful, maybe you relate to one of the styles more than others. I would love to hear your comment, any reaction at all that you have. I look forward to reading those in that section below. And until next time, take care.